the best supplements to boost your immune system right now. Your immune system consists of a complex collection of cells, processes, and chemicals that constantly defend your body against invading pathogens, including viruses, toxins, and bacteria. Remember, keeping your immune system healthy all year long is the key to preventing bacterial infection, viral infection, and other diseases. There has been research showing that some supplements, herbs, and vitamins can help boost your immune system into overdrive. Let's learn about them together, coming up next. Let's go over the top four supplements that will kick your immune system into overdrive. There will be links to purchase the highly effective supplements in each category in the description below. Number one, vitamin D. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin that is essential to the healthy function of your immune system. Vitamin D increases the pathogen fighting ability of your white blood cells, including monocytes and your macrophages. Supplementing vitamin D has the biggest effect in people that are low in this essential vitamin. A study done in 2013 called Vitamin D and Immune Function demonstrated that low vitamin D levels are associated with an increased risk for upper respiratory tract infections, including influenza. In 2019, a meta-analysis or group of studies was examined in a paper titled Vitamin D Supplementation to prevent acute respiratory infections. There were over 11,000 people in the study, and it showed that supplementation with vitamin D significantly decreased the risk of respiratory infection in people that were deficient in vitamin D. The data suggested that vitamin D is protective in its nature to our body's immune system. Other studies on vitamin D have even shown positive results in people on retroviral therapy for diseases such as hepatitis C and HIV. The vitamin D doses of 1,000 to 4,000 international units is sufficient for most people to achieve these effects. However, for some people that are extremely deficient, doses will be much higher. But this must be determined as you work close with your own personal healthcare provider. Number two, zinc. Zinc is an essential mineral that is naturally present in some foods, added to others, and available as a dietary supplement. Zinc is needed for immune cell development and communication and plays an important role in the inflammatory response. Several studies have shown that deficiencies in zinc greatly affect your immune system's ability to function properly, resulting in an increased risk of infection. A 2017 published paper titled Zinc as a Gatekeeper of Immune Function demonstrated that over 2 billion people around the world have a zinc deficiency, and that includes 30% of all older adults. There have even been a study in 2019 in Thailand that demonstrated 30 milligrams of zinc decreased time for recovery in children suffering from lower respiratory infection by two days when compared to placebo. One of the most important things to notice when supplementing zinc is that more is not always better. You're going to want to stick to around 30 milligrams and never exceed 40 milligrams because a dose greater than 40 milligrams causes your body not to absorb copper in the same way and it can result in an increased risk in infection. So stick to that 30 milligram dose to maximize the effect while supplementing zinc to increase the effectiveness of your immune system. Number three, vitamin C. Vitamin C is by far the most popular supplement taken to protect against infection due to its popularity and important role in immune health. Several cells of the immune system can indeed accumulate vitamin C and need the vitamin to perform their task, especially phagocytes and T-cells. Thus, a vitamin C deficiency results in a reduced resistance against certain pathogens whilst a higher supply enhances several immune system parameters. Vitamin C has been shown to have the greatest effects on highly stressed athletes such as soldiers and marathon runners, where it's been demonstrated to decrease the occurrence of the common cold up to 50%. A more realistic number for other people not in the above category is a decrease in 8 to 14% of the duration of sickness of the common cold 
which is equal to about one day for most people. The upper limit for vitamin C dosage is 2,000 milligrams. However, most people should shoot for 250 to 1,000 milligrams per day of vitamin C when taking it as a supplement for the maximum results. Number four is black elderberry. In a 2011 study titled Inhibitory Activity of a Standardized Elderberry Liquid Extract Against Clinically Relevant Human Respiratory Bacteria, Pathogens, and Influenza A and B Viruses, elderberry extract demonstrated potent antibacterial and antiviral properties against many bacteria and virus strains that have a tendency to attack the respiratory system. Elderberry has not been studied as much as vitamin C, vitamin D, or zinc. However, the limited research shows benefits in viral and bacterial respiratory infection. There is no standardized dose for black elderberry extract. However, some of the older studies were recommending one tablespoon or 15 mils four times a day until the symptoms resolve. Overall, the bottom line, vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, and black elderberry all can help boost your immune system to minimize the chance of getting sick and decrease the duration of being sick if you are to get sick. However, there are a couple factors that you need to keep in mind. These supplements cannot replace a healthy, well-rounded diet, and since COVID-19 was not around during a lot of these studies, they weren't mentioned in the studies, so there's no guarantee that they're gonna be effective against COVID-19. So stay healthy, keep eating right, and stay active. And if you're interested in supplements to get you that extra couple more percent of protection, check them out in the description below. Thank you so much for stopping past the channel. I hope that you have a beautiful day. If you're interested in some similar content, click on the subscription button. And remember, I release at least one new video per week, sometimes more.